Welcome to this quick start lighting tutorial for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we take a look at rendering an architectural interior with a daylight look. Open the scene file interior day start dot 3dm found in the downloaded assets from the tutorials webpage linked below. Now the first thing to do is turn on material override to allow us to better focus on just the lighting and to also speed up feedback with the interactive render as we go along. And we'll do that through the asset editor in the settings tab like so. Now if you open the rollout you see you can adjust the material that is assigned to everything with this override. There is however a glass material in these doors that needs to still be glass so that it will allow light into the space from the outside. First, find the material in the material list and it's called Glass Window Neutral. Go to the settings and scroll down to the options and disable Can Be Overridden. There's also a V-Ray proxy in the back which is this skin system on the wall and that's a very complicated piece of geometry. So I'll disable it so it won't slow down the rendering as I test out this initial lighting. This is luckily placed on its own layer, so open the Layers panel if you don't already have it open, and under the Walls layer, disable the Skin sublayer like so. Go to the Settings tab and under Renderer, make sure that it's set to Interactive. Render output should be a nice small size like I have it here, 480 by 600, and then go ahead and start the render. Now as you can see, this is a little dark and that's because of the default location of the Sun in Rhino it's not letting a whole lot of direct light into the scene so open the Sun panel and in there experiment with some different positions for the Sun. I'll settle on using 320 for the azimuth and 49 for the altitude. Now we can go to the camera rollout to adjust the exposure value or EV. Lower values, of course, get brighter and a higher value gets darker. The default EV value that we had of 10 is actually pretty okay for now, so I'll set it back to that. The next thing to do is to enhance or augment the light coming into the scene using a portal light, which is a job for the V-Ray planar light. We'll make one for each of the three windows we have to augment that light coming in from the environment outside through the glass doors. Go ahead and stop your render. In the V-Ray Lights tab of the toolbar, click on the planar light, and then in the front view, go ahead and click to start placing the planar light around the glass door like this. Overlap into the solid part of the door is completely fine, so just make sure to place it so that it covers all of the glass in the door. Then, go ahead and place the light on the outside of the window like so. Now, I'll explain why we're doing it this way shortly, but for now, let's get two more lights placed for the other doors. Hold down the Alt key and use the gumball to drag out two copies of the planar light for the other doors, placing them like so. Take a look at the Asset Editor's Lights tab, and you can see that there are three new lights. They are individual lights, so changing one does not change the other, as we have done in previous Quick Start videos. But if you would like to link the lights together so that changes to one affects all the others, you can use a Rhino group. So select all three of these lights. In the UI here, type in group and it creates a Rhino group. So if you select one, it selects all three. Go back to the asset editor and change the settings for one and you'll now see that it changes the settings for all three lights. Go ahead and start a new interactive render, and I'll elapse about 10 seconds here, and you'll see that the nature of the light is much different. That's because each light is using simple values and actually blocking the sunlight from entering the space from the outside. But what we want to do instead is to take the environment light and enhance it as it enters the space by using these lights as portals. In the asset editor, turn on the portal light parameter. Now the environment is again lighting the room through the windows. Now let's talk about why we put the portal lights on the outside of the windows as opposed to inside the room up against the windows. 
I'm going to drag the three windows inside the room now, and you're going to notice this weird kind of shadow line on the edge inside the window frame. That's created due to the placement of the portal light, so the light on the left side of the shadow is not being enhanced while the light on the right is. So basically, it creates an unnatural shadow line, so I'm going to go ahead and put them all back outside. Now, there are two types of portal lights, simple and accurate. Simple lights will ignore any geometry or any light bouncing or otherwise being affected by geometry and simply pass through an enhanced environment light. Accurate portal lights do take into account the effect that geometry has on that environment light, so let's take a quick look at what that means. Go ahead and stop your render. In the scene, you'll notice outside the space has an infinite ground plane that's gray. If we go to the Asset Editor under the Material section, there is the Infinite Ground Plane Material. So let's make this something super bright so that the environment light will bounce off of it and show us something very obvious when it comes inside. And I'll go with a nice bright fuchsia, which is the fancy way of saying pink. Now I need to make sure that this material is not overridden like we did earlier through the Options section of that material. Now restart the interactive render and you'll notice that the fuchsia color is on the outside bouncing around and hitting the surface, but it does not affect the inside at all. That's because we're still using the simple portal light. In the asset editor, go back to the lights tab and modify the portal lights from simple to accurate. Notice that the fuchsia is now bouncing around inside as well, though this can take longer to compute and render. So if you don't have anything in the environment that needs to affect the light coming in, use a simple portal, which I'm going to do here by setting it back in the lights tab. Then in the material tab, set the infinite ground back to gray. Now let's get back to the sun. I do like the location of the shadows and the light coming through here, but the shadows are a little too sharp for my taste. So I need to soften those edges a little bit. In order to do that, we need to change the V-Ray sun settings for the sun itself, which is called the Rhino Document Sun, which is under the Lights tab in the Asset Editor. The size multiplier is what we need. Adjusting the value here will make the edges of the shadow softer. You can increase the value larger than the slider range by inputting a value like 100 but it makes the shadows too soft and unrealistic. It's best probably to use a value between 1 and 10, so I'll use a value of 8 for some nice soft shadows. Now let's render this for final, so go ahead and stop the interactive render. Go to the Layers tab and re-enable the skin layer from before to get that feature on the wall. Under Renderer, disable Interactive and also disable Progressive. Under the render output, adjust the image width and height to be 800 by 1000, then disable the material override. Now if you have Swarm set up like I have to render this on multiple systems, you can go ahead and enable that now and then start a render. Now I'll elapse some time here so we can see the final result and now we can click show corrections control to make adjustments to the render like we've done in previous videos. Now, I want to make the scene a little warm, so let's start with white balance. Adjust the slider to see the change, and we'll end up with a value of 8811. We also want the shadow to be a little bit cooler, so we can use color balance and only select the shadows. And I'll use the values negative 0 0.05, 0, and 0 0.1. Then we're going to adjust the color curve. The top value I'm going to set around 0 0.67, 0 0.93, and the bottom value somewhere around 0 0.09, 0 0.16. The bright areas are a little too bright, which we can correct by adjusting the exposure. In the exposure section, adjust the highlight burn to a value of 0 0.65. You can find the color corrections file as we have set it up here, as part of the downloaded assets so that you can import them in to see for yourself. 
Now, let's add a little bloom to the image for a more photographic feel. So, open the Lens Effect settings, enable bloom, and adjust the weight to something that you like. I'll set mine to about 11.3, and I'll set my size to 12.21, and the shape to 14.98 to get to what I have here. And there it is, a daylight render of this interior space. Thank you for joining us on this daytime interior lighting quick start video for V-Ray for Rhino.